Since the Brexit talks um, started again this week, many commentators have concluded that there would definitely be an agreement between the UK and the EU uh, about the um, end of the transition period and the future trading relationship. Um, I'm not sure that's right, and, and I want to, to say why I don't think it's right. It, essentially, it, my doubts derive from the internal politics of the Conservative Party. I don't think the fisheries, which is one of the outstanding issues, is going to be a stumbling block. Uh, I think the people are already talking in terms of compromise. And while symbolically for the British, the nation of Drake, Nelson, and Admiral Jelly Kirko, and for some continental coastal regions, fishing is important symbolically or economically, I, I don't think it's so important that it's going to be the, the, uh, the, the end uh, of the possibility of an arrangement. Much more significant, I think, are the two questions of um, state aids and the overall governance of the agreement, which finally may be come to. Um, and both of these issues go to the heart of Brexit and the EU's reaction to it. The EU has a, a very clear set of concerns. Uh, what they're worried about is that after Brexit, um, the United Kingdom, if it's given quota-free and tariff-free access to the European single market, um, may take what continental Europeans would regard as unfair advantage in order to undercut through lower standards um, and through state subsidies um, the, the more competitive um, and the unsupported or any much less supported um, uh, suppliers and manufacturers of the continent. Now, you may think that that's an exaggerated fear, but it's certainly a fear they have, um, and it's not an entirely unreasonable one. British Conservative position, on the other hand, is much more complicated and much more full of, uh, of contradictions. Uh, it, it's an odd thing historically for the British government um, to be reluctant, for a British Conservative government um, to be reluctant to um, cut back on subsidies and state support. Uh, after all, it was the, the great um, central creed of um, factorism um, that the market was going to sort these things out and that the governmental intervention, um, particularly in the way of state subsidies, um, was um, the worst way uh, of getting the economy going on a sustainable basis. Um, that's changed to some extent in present conservatism. Um, there's a view specifically attributed to the Prime Minister's advisor, Dominic Cummings, um, that the um, startup um, support um, of digital companies um, should be a care of the state. There's also a view of some of those conservative MPs who've been elected for not for tr non-traditionally conservative areas in the north of England um, that uh, the government needs to do more to level up um, neglected and uh, underperforming in in industries. Um, that would be a, a reversal of conservative thinking, but uh, it is explicable. What's perhaps even more um, uh, significant in this context um, is the question of governance. Uh, there is a widespread view within today's Conservative Party um, that the break with the European Union shouldn't be a consensual one, shouldn't be one that is based on mutually agreed rules and regulations, but that it should be what they call a clean break. There are those who regard that as a great prize of Brexit, um, that it's possible to emancipate um, the United Kingdom from the shackles of, of Brussels and its uh, outmoded, pedantic, um, uh, in, inappropriate regulation. Um, uh, for these significant um, people within the Conservative Party, any deal is going to be unacceptable, and they, they have a certain logic on their side. It's possible that these people do not constitute a majority within the Conservative Party, but they can constitute an enormously influential group, um, which has, in my view, a power of veto over Johnson. Um, I think it wouldn't be enough for Johnson to be able to command a bare majority of the Conservatives in the House of Commons. He needs to have much more than that. His premiership would be very much at risk if getting Brexit or his Brexit deal through the House of Commons was dependent upon support from the Labour Party. And that would be a humiliation the Conservative Party couldn't accept. There's another consideration that Johnson will have in mind, I think, I'm pointing towards no deal, which is that um, when it became clear that um, Theresa May, under pressure from the Conservative Party, wanted to interpret Brexit as meaning leaving the single market and leaving the customs union, there would have needed to be an enormous effort by the British state 
put in over many years with much resources um, devoted to it to mitigate the effects of this uh, abrupt um, and disruptive form of Brexit. Um, no such thing has happened for two reasons. One, the government were reluctant to admit um, the difficulties and problems inevitably arising from their political decision. And two, there was a, a sort of uh, ideological preference for saying, we'll leave the market to sort this out. It's only now that government is coming to realize um, that there is much that it can and should be doing to mitigate at least the effects um, of both a no deal Brexit and even a Brexit with a deal. Because Brexit with a deal, if we leave the Europe, the common, the customs union and the single market is going to be very damaging and chaotic um, in any case. There might be political advantage for Boris Johnson in um, muddying the waters of claiming that there's no difference between uh, a deal that he might get and no deal, because it's going to be very easy for Boris Johnson and his chums to blame no deal if it comes on the European Union. It might be tempting to say, let's blame the, blame the European Union and let's unite the Conservative Party behind that rallying cry. So I'm not predicting that that's inevitably what's going to happen. What I am saying is that these are considerations which are going through the mind of Boris Johnson and his advisors. It may be that um, as yet, Boris Johnson has no very clear idea of where he wants to end up um, on the Brexit negotiations. That would not be untypical. Um, he's widely regarded as somebody um, who uh, acts and thinks in a very short term, impromptu PR related fashion. But what he may end up with is acquiescence in no deal because it's the, the line of, of least resistance. Um, he might end him up with no deal and as it were having, having no cake um, and not being able to eat it either. That will be a, a supreme irony. Um, and in a, an, a Brexit history that's been full of ironies, it's been an, would be an irony that would be particularly damaging for the United Kingdom as well.